Okay, and welcome back to Introduction to Programming. Now, last time our programming example was really difficult, and I understand that most of you had really a lot of questions about this. So we're going to take a step back now and see components of this program and make it very simple to explain all of this first before we start with classes. Um, and the idea is really that uh, only in a few weeks you really understand what we've done in the Game of Life example and we've seen all the aspects. Those of you that are a little bit more advanced in programming will probably realize this already, but I think for, this, for these people this is also a very good example still. So let's start with something completely new that will slowly uh, add in complexity and that will, I think, also be a, a very nice example of how to program. So let's start our new program and it's called a line. So we start with a new directory. We go into this new directory on both sides and we start a new program called line.cpp. Now, what we're going to do, as always, we're going to first describe who we are. Let's call it like this. And the description for what we're going to do is uh, drawing a line, a squiggly line, for instance. Squiggly line means we're going to have something that goes like this. And for that, we're going to use the random function. But first of all, we're going to draw. So let's include, in that case, the n curses. We know that this is a C library, so we have to uh, add n curses.h. This is a library that we'll later on use. And for the same uh, reason that we're going to have the squiggly line, we're going to also include um, a library called CSTDlib. This is a library that will have um, the random function. More about it later. First, we're going to do already a first attempt at drawing things. So we'll start the main function, which always returns something. In this case, we will return a zero. And since we have the n curses, we have to start um, with the init screen function, which basically starts a new screen with n curses. So our screen will be um, will be drawable in that case. And at the end, when we exit our executable, we have to call endwin to make sure that we return back um, to the console. So we have a new fresh screen that we can draw on from here on. And we've also seen if we do this now, not much is going to happen because it basically will display something and will go right back to the console. We have we need something that uh, will pause everything again, and we'll do exactly that what we had last time. We define a character that we call C, or it's a variable for a character called C, uh, which stores the user inputs, um, and then we have a while loop, for instance, where we um, cycle through as long as the user does not press the Q key. So if the, uh, this is something that we can here get, so with the get character, uh, get character um, function from n curses, we can store the current key that the user has pressed into C. If the user doesn't press a key, it will stay here and, got, and get stuck until the user does press a key. So here, we say store the user key, user pressed key in C. There we go. So now we have a, a while loop that will go on and on and on and on um, here until the user actually presses Q. Right. So now we first need to say we need an object that depicts a line and this line is we can start with a very simple line which is a straight line now how are we going to define this line first of all um, we could say a line can be defined by every um, x, uh, x and y coordinates that goes over the screen so if we have a line for instance going from the middle here um, then it's the first coordinate of the line is it has a line the, 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 I would say this is the 15th line over here of 30 lines that are in the, in the case. So 15 and the, the first column, which in C we know as the zeroth column. So the coordinate 0, 15 is right over here. 
then 115 is over here, 215 is over here, and so on. So basically, if we want to have a line that goes from here to here, we can just define every point on the line first. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. So we say we'll have an integer, or let's go for a short integer in this case. So a short integer is basically an integer with less uh, with less memory, and since we have very small numbers here, this is perfectly fine. The short integer, as we saw, is just two bytes long, and two bytes will basically give us a number uh, between zero and a couple of a thousand. So this is perfectly fine for our purpose here. And we're going to create for that a line array, um, which is basically a set of, num of short integers. And the number of integers that we need is actually given by n curses. So we have here columns going from 0 to all the way here. And this is something that is called calls in, um, in, uh, in the uh, n curses library. So this defines the single points, the single data points of our line. And this is an array that we first need to fill because at the moment this is filled with garbage that was still present in memory. So we have to do something with that. So we can, for instance, say we can use a for loop for that, just as we've seen before. So we say, for instance, we go for uh, our control variable i for this for loop, which goes from 0 um, and will be definitely smaller than calls. So it goes from 0 to calls minus 1, and we increment i as such. And what we do then is we fill line i with a value. For instance, with this 50 that we had here. So now we fill all line points with 15. And this i going from 0 to calls is basically the x coordinate, whereas this 15 is the y coordinate of our line. So if we want to have a straight horizontal line, this is exactly what we would like to have. So we can print this out now, for instance, and for what, what we've seen already, we can first, first clean this uh, screen. So we basically say we go first for um, all i smaller than, we can go for the columns, we increment, and then we do that for j as well. So we have two variables, one going over all the columns, that's the i, and one going for all of the lines, and that is the j um, uh, variable. And say that j is then smaller than the lines, and we increment j like this. And what we could do then is um, we know that there is this move and add character command from n curses, where we move in this case to um, j. I, because the lines come first um, in, in, in the way this function is this defined, and we basically um, clear the screen. So if we clear the screen um, on the j and i uh, coordinates by saying this is an empty character, the whole screen will be cleaned up. Now, this is basically these two um, nested fours are a way to clear our screen. And then afterwards, we can actually draw our line. We can do this, however, in one go. We basically say here, if this, what we have here, and on the i j or the j i coordinates is part of our line, we can draw the line. However, in other cases, we basically just say that this is an empty line. This will be making our lives a little bit easier and our program also a bit shorter. So to say then, if we are now on the i and j i and j coordinates, and this is part of our line, we draw the line. So this is just an if test, where we test for um, i in this case, this is, these are the columns. So in this case, um, well, we can actually just have one, one test on j. So if j in this case equals our line, I. So basically, if our line over here um, has as a coordinate j, and we're already in the i line, so in line 0, line 1, line 2, etc., then we have to draw over here 
something. Um, let's draw here the line width. Then we have to first say where. So at ji, we draw a line. We can draw just something like this, for instance. And in any other cases, we draw the empty. So I hope this is uh, clear already. So we go for every coordinate on the screen. We cycle through all the lines and all the columns we have on our screen. And if our line uh, contains the value that is uh, our current uh, line number, then we draw the line. And in any other case, we basically draw empty, uh, empty characters. And we do this now for uh, the whole screen. So every I and J, so every line and column position. And then we wait until the user presses a key. And if this is not the queue, then we do this again and then again and again. So let's try this one already out. So we know that we have to um, compile this by giving our source. We can say that our executable is called line, for instance. And we know that since we use n curses, we have to also use uh, add this uh, in our linker path. So basically we have we use this library and we need to link this into our executable. Now stdlib we don't use at the moment, uh, but later when we'll use it, it is actually inherent of uh, C, so we don't have to end that. All right, I didn't make any mistakes, I hope. So if we execute this executable, there we go. This is our line going from zero, the coordinate 0, 15, all the way to but I expect 35 or 50, uh, 40, um, 15. So these are the coordinates of our line. And we can type numbers here, doesn't uh, do anything. And we can press Q to just um, yeah, uh, uh, get out of this again. Now this is, the st this is a good start. Now let's start uh, now with adding the squiggly line. And for the squiggly line, the second thing that I wanted to see uh, now is uh, really important, namely how we're going to make this squiggly. And the way we do this is we're going to not uh, give the line always the same y coordinates. So if x is 0, the x coordinate is 0, then we give it a y coordinate 15, and if uh, x is 1, then we give it 15, if x is 2, then we give it 15, and so on. Now we're going to let it jiggle a little bit. And for that, we can use the random function that comes out of this stdlib. Um, and for that, we've, we start with, for instance, in the middle of the screen, so we say that for the first um, coordinate, so when we're on the, the first column, so we have line 0, this is the first column, we give that the y value of um, lines divided by 2. So in this case, we take the number of lines, which is about 35, I would say, and we divide it by 2. And since this is an integer, lines is an integer, this is something that comes out of the uh, library, this will be an integer as well that we have there. So our first point of our line is somewhere in the middle of our screen on the y-axis. And then we're going to add a little bit or subtract a little bit from that. And we're going to use the random function uh, from, uh, standard, from the standard library. And the way we're doing that is we're going to say line at position i, and i starts then at 1, because 0 we already filled, is exactly the same as line i minus 1, so the previous function. And then we're going to add something to this. Now we could just say we add something random to this, but this random is giving a really big number, uh, a random number between 0 and something rather big. Now we want, however, to have something random that is either uh, minus 1, 0, or plus 1. So that our line is a little bit squiggly, but it doesn't jump up too much. Um, and our, the way we can do this is by looking at the modulo operator. So the modulo operator kind of constrains whatever we have between 0 and a certain number. So if we do random modulo 3, then we basically have whatever number we have here. Uh, we look at the remainder if you divide this number by 3. Um, so that means the only possibilities that you can get out of here are 0, 
if it is really uh, uh, can be divided by three and it doesn't leave any digits, or one or two. That is uh, what this will end up with. And if we want to then make sure that this is also possible and that we have uh, minus one, zero, or one, we basically just have to do minus one here. Right? So this is the nice way. If we do this, then we have a random number that is either minus one, zero, or one. Or in this case, this over here is either zero, one, or two. Right, so we um, add minus one, zero, or one to this um, to this over here. Let's move it a bit so we can read our um, our, our comments. Okay, so now line will be a little bit more squiggly when we draw it out. Let's see if that is the case. There we go, it is. So here our line, um, our random fun function uh, ended up in um, one, so therefore minus one is zero, and the coordinates stay the same. Here again, however, here we did plus one, here we did minus one, here we did plus one, here again plus one, etc. So now we have a squiggly line that we created uh, with our function here. Now if we move uh, our screen a bit so we have a little bit more space, you can see that this goes on and on and on. So let's move that again. So we have a squiggly line that um, we can use later for a, lot of a couple of nice things. But what we've seen here, or what is really important, is that with just these few lines, with this random function, we could add this squiggliness, this is a random function, and with the modulo operator, we could constrain this random number between a certain range. The range being uh, minus one, since we uh, subtracted one all the time, um, and a particular number. The second thing that uh, I wanted to show is that with one nested for loop, we drew the entire screen. So we didn't just empty the screen, with these over here, but also we drew part of the line with those over here. So we went for every cell in our screen and drew either part of the line or the empty screen. This is something we're going to do later a little bit more 